At the source of the canal, there is a river, the river Alzo. The story begins up here in the Montagne Noire, the southernmost tip of the Massif Central. Here at the source of the river Alzo, in a landscape that hardly recalls southern France, began the great adventure of the Canal of the South, the Canal du Midi. To collect enough water to feed the highest point on the canal at Nohouz, the man behind the plan, Pierre Paul Riquet, had the idea of connecting all the rivers that ran down from the Montagne Noire. The irrigation channel winds its way round the mountain like a rainwater gutter on both its Atlantic and Mediterranean sides. Then it heads for the watershed at Nohouz, so the water can flow both ways to the two seas. For 30 kilometers from the source of the Alzo, almost as far as the town of Revel, the mountain channel leads to the San Ferriero Dam. Building began in 1667 on what was then the largest earth dam in Europe and probably the world. It holds six million cubic meters, enough to fill the Canal du Midi. From saint Ferriol, a second channel brings the precious liquid down towards the plain and the Nourouz watershed. From the boatsman's point of view, the journey begins in Toulouse, far to the west of the Montagne Noire. Toulouse, on the river Garonne, is the start of the waterway that leads to the Mediterranean at Set or Narbonne. All the waterways meet in Toulouse. On the left, the Canal Latéral heads down the valley of the Garonne to Bordeaux. The Canal du Midi starts at this arch, with, on the right, the short Canal de Brienne, linking both canals to the River Garonne. The marble bas-relief by Luca in 1775 symbolizes the union of the two seas. Neptune, fertility, abundance. This was the swan song of the Ancien Regime, soon to be swept away by the tide of history. Plain trees line the Canal du Midi as it makes a broad curve round the centre of Toulouse. On one side, the Minim district, birthplace of the singer Claude Nougaro. In the distance, the tower of San Serna, the largest Romanesque basilica in Europe. Next, the railway station Matabio and busy streets leading into the rose red city of Toulouse. People often compare Toulouse to Tuscany, and I think they're right. It's also said that Virgil came across the low lying hills to Toulouse and wrote poetry there. I don't know if it's true, but it wouldn't surprise me. There's a very Latin aspect to this area, democratic and tolerant. It's the mixture of cultures. People are only scared of the unknown. This region has known all sorts of ups and downs, including the terrible religious wars. The silk routes to Asia are famous. Marco Polo and the big trading centers along the way are all well known. Well, here it was the tin route. We're right in the heart of the tin route and tin was essential for making bronze. It supplied the arms industry. Tin's raw material was mined in the British Isles. It came down the Vendée coast from Brittany and was then shipped up the Garonne. And that's why Toulouse was a major tin trading center. Toulouse took a long time to honor Riquet, the builder of the canal. And when it did, the statue turned its back on the water. On the way out of Toulouse, the canal passes the science district, 
where the engineers at CNES, the French Space Agency, design satellites for the European space effort. Ramonville saint agne has a large marina for the boating folk of Toulouse. After a couple of locks, the canal heads between its plane trees into the Laura Gay. This cereal producing plane is dotted with windmills and dovecots. Pigeon droppings were highly prized manure. In the 16th century, the Laura Gay made the fortune of Toulouse by producing the blue pastel, also known as Dyer's Woad. The local farmers sometimes irrigate their fields from the canal with or without permission. In the days when a mail boat took passengers from Toulouse to Agde on the Mediterranean, there were many inns and hostelries along the way. At the Negra lock, travellers could dine before they spent the night, and the stables supplied fresh horses to pull the boats. There is even a little chapel where they could pray. Not far from the canal lies the village of Saint-Rome. The chateau is surrounded by farm buildings and labourers' houses, illustrating every style imaginable. Toulouse, Flanders, the Rhine, Scandinavia, with a touch of the Moorish, all using the local red brick. The smooth progress of the canal required heroic engineering in the 17th century. One such exploit was the aqueduct over the river Hers. The Canal du Midi now climbs to its highest point, the rather flat col at Nourouz. On a hill to the left, you see the village of Avignonnet. It was here that in 1242, two members of the Holy Inquisition paid the cost of southern anger. During the Albigensian Crusade 20 years before, northerners had tried to crush the Cathar heresy by force of arms. Now Dominican monks were finishing the job, using paid informers, interrogation and torture, burning both living heretics and their dead bodies. One of the Dominicans, Guillaume Arnaud, accompanied by a Franciscan and other inquisitors, was looking for Cathars in Avignonnet. He was attacked by a troop of horsemen from the Cathar Redoute, Montségur, in the Pyrenees. The Inquisitors were murdered and their files destroyed. But in reprisal, Montségur was taken by Catholic forces in 1244 and more Cathars were burned at the stake. Back to the present, where the Canal du Midi meets the 20th century. At Port Lorague, the canal runs alongside the autoroute not far from the railway line. <laughs> Gradually, the sound of traffic dies away as we approach the heart of the canal. The ocean rock opens onto the stretch of water at Nauru's the highest point on the canal. That's not woman's work. This lock is a woman's lock because it's well cared for and fairly easy to operate. It's just what a woman needs to keep on form. No rules with its long lines of plane trees and the modest guardhouse, where the armistice was signed between Napoleon's Marshal Soup and the Duke of Wellington on the 18th of April, 1814. Here at Nourouz, the canal builder Riquet had ambitious dreams for a new town. And here, beside the watermill, the irrigation channel arrives from the springs of the Montagne Noire. 
This is the water that fuels the canal and makes it work. And at this point between the Atlantic and the Mediterranean, the water from the Montagne Noire divides. We move on towards the east and the charming village of Segala. The canal also has a past that no one talks about because it's a secret. It used to be used for smuggling. Going back a long way, to 1914. There were barges that shipped wine. In the wine growers' farms along the way, the bargemen loaded more than they were supposed to, or something like that. Anyway, after sunset, they sold part of the wine. The locals called it moon wine. But no one remembers that anymore. Mm. They called it moon wine. It was contraband wine. Once it has passed Nourouz, the Canal du Midi runs down to the Mediterranean, and the vegetation already begins to change. From the next lock can be seen the outskirts of Castel Nutri. The canal has changed department, from the Haute-Garonne to the Old, and region from Midi-Pyrenees to Languedoc-Roussillon. And in La Bastille d'Anjou, a few kilometers from the capital of the Lauragais, we learn the secret of Castelnaudry Cassoulet. Now we use beans grown in sandy soils, as they were at Pamier, and a host of other local produce. To begin with, you need preserved duck, sausage from Castelnaudry, and a good Castelnaudry ham. You season it with thyme and garlic, which is excellent at the moment because of the dry weather, some good quality onions, cooking salt, which is much better than table salt, and milled pepper. Now start by soaking the beans for four hours. Cook the salted bacon, the ham and the onions. Cook them three times for three hours. Now pierce the skin to check the cooking. Don't be afraid to wet it regularly with the sauce from the bacon, onions and bone. Then off it goes into the oven to blanch, like a mini volcano. Finally, sprinkle on some milled pepper. Everyone has their own personal recipe, of course. There are three main ones. Carcassonne, Castelnaudry and Toulouse. But of course, Cassoulet's original recipe actually comes from Castelnaudry, back in 1630. Castelnaudary is the first special place on the Canal du Midi. It's an inland harbour. From Toulouse up to here, the waterway was squeezed in between the plane trees. The Castelnaudary basin provides breathing space. 
It's also an important reservoir for the canal, providing enough water for the four locks at Saint-Roch, the eastern outlet of the basin. Castel Nudery has a fine succession of bridges. The Pont Neuf was built of stone and brick in 1802, in the classic style of the Ancien Régime. It opens onto the harbour, the terminus of the first section of canal, opened in the 1670s. This is the centre of Castel Nudery's old port. Hundreds of tons of corn were traded here. Next comes the Pont Vieux. Its single arch and round shape show that it was built in the 17th century, which doesn't stop it carrying modern traffic. The Pont Vieux opens onto the entrance to the Grand Bassin, an oval inland harbour 400 metres by 300. Castel Nodri has become a focus for boating. A peaceful armada in white and blue is stationed here much of the year. Before leaving the town, the boatsman has some hard work ahead, the Saint-Roch lock. In four steps that are one of the engineering marvels of the waterway, the Canal du Midi falls nearly nine and a half meters. This difference in water level was once used to power mills to grind flour. We leave Castel Nodery in the company of an English couple. My, na my name's John McDonald and my wife is Pat. Come out here. Um, we come from uh, Essex in England and um, we retired at the end of June this year. We left Essex near Harwich on the 30th of July and worked our way down the English coast. We then crossed the channel to Guernsey, Cherbourg, uh, uh, Cherbourg, Cherbourg, and then and to then, Guernsey, then to Guernsey. Uh, around the coast of Brittany, Brittany coast, and we some of the islands. called on Ile de Namoutier and Ile de Eu, and then uh, La Rochelle, uh, Royan, uh, into the river to Bordeaux, and then we entered the canal system at the lock at Castets, and came through the canal lateral, and now we're in the Dumidi. <laughs> 